It is time for Firearm Friday, a weekly podcast that brings the firearm and outdoor industry straight to those in the community. And now here's your host, the tactical leprechaun himself, Chris Stover. TGIF crew, this is Chris Dover, and wow, we got a good one today. We're going to talk to Kurt Whitworth with Hunt Go, and Hunt Go has a revolutionary new shoot-through bore cleaning product called Clean Shot. But first, let's talk a little reloading. Anyone who knows anything about reloading knows that Starline Brass is the best brass to have. It's no wonder that many boutique ammunition manufacturers choose to use Starline Brass. Uh, Whether you're looking for common calibers or those little uh, quirky niche market calibers, Starline Brass probably has what you need. For more information, jump over and check out StarlineBrass.com. All right, we've got Kurt on the line with us. How are you, Kurt? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? I am... uh, I'm great, actually, doing really great. Uh, I have, uh, I've just recently ran across your products, just recently ran across the the clean shot shells, the 20 gauge and 12 gauge. Uh, never knew something like that existed. Uh, very, very cool product. I'm glad uh, you're here today to kind of talk about those. And what I'd like you to start out with, because what I, I really am curious about, that's not something that you, you see on every shelf in every store in america so uh, i'm kind of curious how the how the concept how the thought came to your mind of of this is something that the market needs you know and uh and how the business started in uh you know humble beginnings so to speak so uh you mind telling us a little bit about that yeah so um law i'll go all the way back to 2006 uh i've always been I was a creative guy, a creative guy from the beginning. I, I was creative. I owned a marketing company or had been marketing communications for 34 years. Um, so always been creative. Um, and so what I had done is I, I had always carried like a notebook with me because if an idea came into my head that I thought was a really cool idea, I could write it down on a piece of paper and at least get it out of my head and onto a piece of paper. And then then I could always come back to it and and, and look at it. So. So I formed Huntigo Limited um, as a company that would, I would be able to take my inventions one day and, and put it into a company and sell it to the market. Um, I have a couple other patents unrelated to, to CleanShot, um, and that was my plan. So um, while I was working another job and had a company, um, I was always side projecting inventions and ideas and you know I, I mean I hate to say you know I'm that kitchen table engineer but but I am it would be you know three o'clock in the morning and I'm like oh I got this great idea let me go downstairs I got to write this down I don't want to forget that this is a good one or you know dream about something or just see something in your head and so that is what I had kind of programmed myself at you know to do so back in 2012 I, I can remember the day, December 12th, 2012. Um, I was sitting at a, at a table, um, and I, 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 I literally, I wish my story was, you know, I shot all the time, and my gun was dirty, and I just couldn't get it clean, and I got, you know, I have to figure out a better way to clean my gun. Um, again, being the inventor guy or the creative guy, um, I did shoot, you know, and I did clean my gun, but... The idea for clean shot came to me just as a vision in my head and it sounds really crazy um, it just I saw something um, of, a, of a shoot through bore cleaner um, I thought it was a cool idea and I drew it down on a piece of paper a little notepad I still have this I literally I found it a couple months ago up in my bin but um, really so it, it just started with a little scribble uh, on a piece of paper drinking a diet coke uh, in the right frame of mind um, that was on day one. On day two, I expanded a little bit farther. On day three, I flew home from Vegas. And by the time I got home, I had a seven page business model, market expansion, product development, you know, vision in my head. So once that was, once that business model started in that way, um, I, I, I've, you know, just been chasing it ever since. 
Wow, you uh, that's a lot of work <laughs> that you put you in. Know, it, but it, it just happens. It, it, it's wow. just, it, it, it's, I'll, I will say, yeah, it's a lot of work, but the bottom line is it just happens, right? So when it's flowing, it's flowing, and when it's not, I get it. But bottom line is, you know, if you're just sitting there on a seven-hour flight from Vegas, um, you're just writing down ideas, had my headphones on, had a, you know, Coke or, you know, whatever, and just, just man, it was, you're flying. You're, you're just literally, you know, and just it's coming out, and I'm writing it down. Right, and you're you're a little bit blessed to have the best best of both worlds there because you've got, you know, these inventive ideas, and then you also have the sounds like the business savvy to be able to then get into the marketing and the and the business plan and the stuff that you actually need to get a project up and off the ground. Just an idea is, it's not enough, unfortunately. But you know, but I, but I'll be honest with you. Um, you know, when I when I used to own a marketing creative company, um, what you're selling is is human time, right? You're, you're you're selling creative services, right? Writing and photography and graphic design and printing and all that kind of stuff. When it comes to manufacturing and distribution um, and mass merchant and dealer distributor negotiation, I mean, it. it I, I will say this: it is. Even though I did work for companies like that, now living it and doing it, it's it's last year. Let me say, seventeen. The end of seventeen was crazy. Two thousand eighteen is even crazier. Nineteen is going to be <laughs> really crazy, you know. But it's all good. It's all good. I mean, it, you know, it's a it's a it's a enormous learning curve, and we're you know just negotiating our way through it. And you know, there's challenges every day. But but really, what I you know again what. I think it's the thrill of the chase, right? You've got an idea, you know, from, from mind to market, right? From, from, uh, from an idea on a sheet of paper to being in retail outlets um, and then expanding it and, and growing this possibly into a global platform or business. That's the, you know, that's, that's addicting. Right. Yeah. Now from, now from your concept to the, the first prototype, the first tangible yep. thing you could, you could hold, what kind of time frame? was there from from those two points well so what I, what I ended up doing was um, I began going online and looking for something I mean that's always I, I will say I can I can probably give you 50 examples of something that you know you think of or like oh that's a really cool idea and then you go online and three hours later oh there it is someone already designed it you know what I mean or oh it's already on the market you know so what I did is I started looking it up. I couldn't find it. Um, I began looking into patents. Um, I've probably read 2,000 patents uh, at this point. Um, I taught myself how to read patents and kind of like blow through a lot of the stuff and jump right into the abstract and you know look at the drawings and you you completely understand. So there's you know there's things out there that that were possibly along the same realm. Um, but I knew that, you know, distinctly different that what my product was and how it performed. Um, and then also, too, um, I bought some books on how to reload and uh, taught myself. I bought a loader and I bought a bunch of products um, like from Ballistic Products and, and Midway USA, you know, like reloading authorities. Right. So so I, I bought some products and I just started studying wads. Um, and, I, and I will say so it probably for, probably from. From a piece of paper, I mean, really what you end up having to do is you do all your research, you can't find it, you read a bunch of patents, and then you ap apply for a provisional patent. At the same time, once you apply for a provisional patent, you have one calendar year. I mean, not, 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 not 12 months in a day, but 12 months. I mean, one day later, you're off the table. So you apply for a provisional well then you have one year to apply for a utility so I applied for my provisional because I couldn't find it and then I at the same time I was cutting up wads and studying and at some point you do get to that point where you have to load it and shoot it and, and you know I did and I'll be I'll be absolutely absolutely honest you know I I, I read up on it I I, I, I knew my math um, and I loaded a shotgun shell. I put my shotgun in a sled. I strapped it down, and I put a string on the trigger, and I hid behind the tree, and, you know, I pulled the trigger. Right. And I'm like, okay, the gun didn't blow up. You know, it looked pretty, you know, normal. Uh, and then I felt pretty comfortable that, 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 you know, what I was doing was, 
was uh, down the right path ballistically. But on the other hand, you fail, right? So you design it, it fails. So you take that information and then you go back to the table and you design it and it fails and it design it and fails. And so I did that for, for uh, uh, probably two years. Wow. Um, yeah. I mean, again, it, it was, it was an addiction, right? So you're, you're, you're on it. It's not every day. I mean, it's, you know, often and it's every week for sure, but um, you know, you get it to the point, let me say, I re-engineered it to the point where I understood the tinsel strengths of polyethylene. I studied gunpowder propellants with nitroglycerin, nitrocellulose, and carbon molecules. I understood the pressure between a payload and your and your propellant, and then also to the you know kinetic energy that happens in there. So I had to, again, you're just you're reading, you're 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 learning, and you're studying something that I was trying to achieve because I saw the potential of the benefit to the hunters and the shooters as a potential product that could go on the market. Wow. Does that make sense? That, that makes, yeah, that makes total sense. And uh, that was just wow at the amount of work. <laughs> just sounds like a lot of work and a, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of really geeking out, right? I reload yeah. and, and I'm sure there's, there's numerous folks out there that, uh, that reload as well that's that's watching or listening to this right now and and i don't you know very few of us probably geek out that much over stuff but you know you had a purpose with that and it was uh it was kind of an out of the box you know off the wall purpose uh, a lot of us are not looking at firing something that actually cleans as it as it fires that's a, a very unique concept so uh, I can just imagine the amount of, of R&D that went into it. Now, once the, um, once the, you know, you had a, the first product, I guess, that was successful or mildly successful at doing mm-hmm. what you needed to do, um, how many times have you revised it since then, and, and did that require additional patents, or how did that go? So I would say you're revising it. You're you're continuing to revise it all along until you get to a product that works every time, right? So so for me is I probably from from like you know the original to where I was ready to go like okay this is this is it this this is I'm done messing you know I'm done making changes and I have all my mathematical equations and my payload and my propellants all that all that stuff is all worked out I'll, I'll probably say 30 40 renditions wow and, and I don't mean I don't mean renditions of of you know construction um well, different load, uh, different load data. I'm sure, right? Oh yeah, and right, right. I mean, and, links and, and, of the wad and d- yeah, yeah, absolutely, like yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, the bottom line is, you know, it's if it does, you, know, you have to be able to load it and close the shell and have everything tight. So you know, that's all based off of the volume of propellant, how thick your gas seals are, how you know high your wad is, how much space your payload takes. So you know, you change something by a sixteenth of an inch. I mean that changes a lot of stuff. So, so, you know, I, you know, again, I, I went into like single cavity molds and I tested, you know, five different polyethylene makeups, you know what I mean? And so, so once, once you say, okay, this is, this is the right one, then, then once I had that, I mean, again, you're probably, you know, again, your years and tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in, you know, in time and, and materials, but um, again, you're just, you're chasing it. You're, you're trying to figure it out. So, you know, again, I'm, it, 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 30 could be wrong. It could be more like 50, but bottom line is you're, you're just continuing to develop until you have a product that you just say, this is what I can go into manufacturing with. Now, uh, along the way, until you actually got to the point uh, that you were ready to, to break through with manufacturing and go to the market, um, were there were there other patents that you had to obtain along the way? Did anything change? Yeah. Significant so 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 patents. Um, so today I am uh, I'm nine patents into it, mm-hmm. and so you're always looking at in just the uh, one. That's in just the clean shot. 
Yeah, just um, wow. shoot through bore technology. You know, okay. we're gotcha. we're we're nine patents into it. So uh, I will say the original patent isn't what we're using today. It was one of the revisions as we went down the road. So as we would uncover um, something that needed to be changed, then I would have to apply for a another utility patent. Um, again, then if I thought of something else that I think that might work in a different thing, but kind of pushing out the same theory, then what I would try to do is patent it. So, so again, I have a variety of patents. I'm using, let's just say, I'm using the center one, and I and I'm in, I'm circled with patents that that you know are other ways that I might be able to do this. Um, but this is the one that I found that I could manufacture, um, and this was the path I was going down. Gotcha. Okay. And yeah, that's I, I guess that's understandable because as as time goes along, I mean, I'm sure you you probably run across different materials you can use in the manufacturing, and whether it be whether they be more efficient or a cheaper cost or whatever the case may be, that that can change that up. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's totally understandable. Now, once you once you had that uh, once you had that golden egg, so so to speak, <laughs> and you were you were ready to go. Um, you know, how did how did all that roll out? How did you go from okay, I have something, I'm ready to go to market. Uh, you know, the manufacturing side of things is is set. Now it's it's time to get you know get out there, uh, try to get big box stores to pick up on it, whatever the case may be. Well, I, I think even in the another thing is once you get to the product that that works. I mean, you have to source out all the materials, right? So. You know, I have an injection molder in Michigan. I've got products coming from from New Hampshire. Um, I'm trying to think of where I have some, uh, like two or three different companies in Michigan. Um, you know, and you that's a to, good you know, and that's a good point. And a lot of folks out there, when we talk on the industry side, are interested in that. Is is everything pretty much sourced U.S.? Yeah. Oh, uh, the only it? thing that I that I outsource is my propellant because it's a it's a highly oxidized special formulation. Right. And so again, because I need to maximize my compression and my burn off, gotcha. uh, it's a, that's a frequently asked question. But um, everything everything is in the United States, from packaging to uh, hulls to primers to materials to gas seals to payload. Every assembly, uh, I, I assemble in Roberta, Georgia. Um, so again, it's you know you have to you have to out you have to source all the materials. You know you have to buy volume in order to be ready to present this in front of a, a mass merchant. Or you know again, if you know the, if the cost is too high because your components are are not affordable or assembled at a, an affordable rate then you've got a whole nother problem on the other end so you know we felt we had to um at least get to some type of volume manufacturing um where you know again i'll, I'll use an example i'll, I'll produce five hundred thousand rounds at a time uh in order to wow. you know meet a certain price point wow Wow, and how so, long? So, so for how? for a specific product, I mean, I'm buying, yeah. I'm buying like um, twenty three thousand tons of payload. Jeez, Louise, and uh, for for a, an order that size or to manufacture that many, what what roughly what is the output or what can the output be? What do you mean output? You mean like um, if I do five hundred thousand rounds? Well, I mean, when we're talking reloading, I mean people go, well, I can load, you know, four hundred an hour, or I can load three hundred an hour, or you know, they, big manufacturers, of oh. course, thousands and thousands an hour. But I, I'm guessing you have machinery, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. Uh, I don't. I outsource rate. again in order to. Oh, okay. In order to in order to manufacture and sell ammunition, uh, first of all, we had to acquire an FFL Type Six. Right. Um, ammunition manufacturing license that was going to be my next question since yeah. you were talking about a special powder that one of my questions was going to be the powder and you answered that <laughs> being a specialized yeah. powder and then my next was going to be because of the powder it did it actually fall under the definition of ammunition so i guess the no, both, both we, of those we, are yes it, it, i would say it does 
Um, and on the other hand, I'll say, well, I have to say it does. I mean, there's an, the, the old saying, you know, if it sounds like a duck and it looks like a duck, call it a duck. Legally speaking, yes. Legally <laughs> speaking, right? It, you know, the, 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 the clean shot is specifically designed to power scrub, trap the particles, and clean the bore and the choke and your porting of your shotgun, right? It is not, it's not, its intent isn't to hit a target um, or, you know, skeet or trap or anything. Now, I know it will, and I know people have, are, you know, they put stuff out there saying, hey, look, I hit a, you know, station five target, you know, uh, and, I, and I, I broke it. Because the velocity is, you know, at 1,050 feet per second, or, you know, that's for the 12 gauge and 1,030 feet per second for the 20 gauge. Um, again, it shoots like a duck. It sounds like a duck, just call it a duck, you know? Right. So, so from that standpoint, I, I had to acquire a FFL type six manufacturing license. Now, because I'm outsourcing it to an actual manufacturer of shot shells, they have an FFL type six. So, so I, I don't personally, we, we subcontract that out. I, 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 sure. Huntigo ourselves don't, doesn't load this. The, I, right. I, you know, I went to someone who had like 50 years experience in loading ammunition. Right. Yeah. Now, the, now they're, you know, again, the, the volumes vary. I mean, you could go to uh, like a, like a, a niche market manufacturer and they can do eight to 10,000 rounds a day, or you could go to a mass manufacturing where they do 12,000 an hour right right and that's i'm i'm assuming you're not to that point yet <laughs> correct we are not to that point yet <laughs> it would it we're getting there we'll get there eventually hopefully in 2019 uh, would, we'll be there right that's a good problem to have for sure uh but yeah i mean i, I don't have a problem with the uh with the outsourcing i mean even with you know talking about having to get things out of the u.s I, we've talked to multiple people in the industry that are like well we we try to get everything here as, as best we can but this one part you know it's like nobody in the u.s makes it or, or you know nobody here offers it or whatever the case may be so well, um, well, yeah when you, you outsource the- when you outsource stuff too uh you know that's more jobs i mean you're you're yeah. obviously uh, not that you have to deal with and as a business owner myself sometimes having uh Employees that are not your employees is the best kind of employees. So, <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, I, you know, I, I did. I'm a f- super strong. I'm a firm believer in manufacturing in the USA. Um, first of all, when you're ma- manufacturing ammunition, I don't necessarily believe you can manufacture. And you know, let's say I manufactured it in Europe. Um, then you have to import it back here. I mean, there's just so many ITAR regulations and you know legal stuff that you have to go through. But the issue was more of I always, from the very, very, very beginning, has always have always been made in the USA, made in the USA. So you do you come across those hurdles where you say, like I you know I found this super high concentrated felt material that has you know um, steel shavings in it. You know, and I thought, man, that's going to be great. It will really help scrub the bore. Um, you know, and, and really have a, you know, a, a, you know, let's say a light abrasive to it, you know, more than a high density felt would, but, um, you know, it's manufactured in like Germany, you know what I mean? And so, you know, again, I had to find a solution here within the U S and again, e- even in that scenario, I mean, you're going to multiple suppliers, you're cutting samples, you're finding the right material. It's just, you know, it, it's just what you do. You're, you're, you're just chasing to find the right product that works and then you test it thoroughly and then once it's approved and then you know there's a lot of stamping and 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 cutting and you know pre-assemblies that all have to happen so right. it's, it's just it's just the road we've taken sure well let's um let's shift gears a little bit get into the get into the actual product talk a little bit about the the use and i guess a little bit about uh, effectiveness and how it works is it is it more with the shoot through technology is that more a um is that more of a maintenance play more of a maintenance role rather than a i would say a what would be the a restoration role i mean it's not for 
something that's rusted and set up for years, uh, does, it, does it work as well? It take a bunch of those and it'll eventually get it done? Or You know what, I, I will say this. So there, I, we put a post out. Um, my brother-in-law had, had a, his dad had a shotgun sitting in his closet for 20 some years. He goes, I, he goes, I remember that shotgun sitting in that closet when I was a kid, you know what I mean? And it's still there. And so we took, we, we take a, we took a look at it and man, it was decayed. It, it was not that it was pitted, but whoever shot it 20 some years ago, put it away dirty. Um, now I will say, um, I was very hesitant of shooting a clean shot through that because it had been, you know, the moisture and the dust and, and, and the, you know, the carbon that had been in there had really bonded to it. Now, I will say we took a risk. We shot one clean shot and it removed it in one shot. Wow. Okay. So the clean shot uses an external force of uh, 10,000 PSI of outward. And I'll go, I'll jump into the, the actual mechanics of the, of, of how it works. And I'll ex try to explain it the best I can, but really to answer your question, it's more of, um, I use this example. So if I went out and shot, um, a hundred rounds of skeet and I shot a hundred rounds of trap at the end of the day, I simply load a clean shot into my shotgun. I fire it and it field cleans my gun in like a four hundredth of a second. Now, what I look at it is, it's a, it's a field cleaning device. It's a maintenance device. I'm a firm believer and Huntigo is a firm believer in scheduled maintenance of your, and, and you know, maintaining your shotgun or any firearm. So what I do is about every six months, um, I'll break my shotgun down and I'll squirt some, you know, cleaner in there. Um, maybe some Gunzilla or Pro 7 or a little Hoppies, uh, get a brush and, you know, just run it a couple times, patch it out. But here's one thing I'll say. What used to take me 45 minutes to an hour in my garage to, mm -hmm. to bench clean my shotgun, I now do in like eight minutes. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how easy those jobs are if you actually maintain your stuff. <laughs> right, right. right. So no matter what you're hunting, you know, you're shooting a large volume or medium volume of shells. I don't care if you shot five rounds through your gun at the end, just fire a clean shot. Now, another thing too is, so I'll fire a clean shot. I take my gun, I put it in the case, I throw it in the truck, I drive home. When I get home, my wife says, we need to go grocery shopping, gotta take the kids to the soccer game, blah, blah, blah. What, whatever the issues are, that I have to deal with, like, you know, getting out into the garage for 45 minutes or, or whatever, or even, you know, 10, 15 more minutes, you know, Hey, you know, I've been gone for half the day and now I'm going to go out in the garage for another hour, whatever the bottom line is. Um, I don't have to, I, 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 I know that my gun is clean. It's in my case, it's dry. And bottom line is my shotgun will be ready when I'm ready to use it. Right. Gotcha. Now you, you mentioned about you. We talked about trap and, and you know the skeet and that sort of thing. A um, couple of questions that I've got on the product is uh, the first is rifle barrels and how effective it is with that sort of thing or, or even possible. And then next with you know with shotguns, it's not copper fouling is not really an issue, but you right. know lead could be. So yep. uh, how well uh, does it handle? rifling and then potential lead buildup so during the 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 validation process another thing too is uh for which was really important for for me was that it had to fully cycle right for semi-autos oh that's know. a good that's a good point. yeah 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 that was and, and again we went through a whole thing where well you know it doesn't have to cycle and i'm like yeah yes it does like it absolutely has to cycle so it does it it cycles through through let me say, I, I would say it cycles through all semis, but again, there's some Mossbergs out there that Most. have a super heavy duty spring and they <laughs> right. shoot, you know, three inch, you know, shells with slugs. And again, they have their own complications, but um, I'll say is I haven't had an issue where it didn't cycle through uh, a shotgun. And of course a pump isn't an issue, but, um, and I, and a lot of our test guns are, are, um, over unders and so so again I, I need to be able to break it open see what happens study the bore you know i mean i need, I need easy access to that 
but uh, you know, we tested it on a, a, a variety of smooth and rifled bores. Um, some of the, during the process, uh, we sent out samples to a number of, of publications, um, Field and Stream, Guns Magazine, Wide Open Spaces, um, Truth About Guns is another one that, that wrote a review. Now, they are publications. I didn't pay for advertising. I don't advertise on, on any of them. Um, and they took the opportunity to go out and test the product. And they shot, you know, they showed pictures of it before. They listed what they shot. They were shooting um, uh, Winchester Extreme slugs in rifled barrels. They were shooting turkey loads. They were shooting target loads. I mean, the guy listed like seven different types of ammunition in both smooth and rifled barrels. And what he would do is he would clean, he would shoot one clean shot at the, at the end of his test. Um, as a matter of fact, he even said, I even, I even stopped running a patch through it, thinking that maybe I was helping the product out. He goes, I, he, and literally he said, he goes, I, I, he, he was, I'll use a word he used, um, chromatic mirror-like finish. Nice. And I'm like, man, that's like, you know, lyrical, you know, music to my ears, right? It, it was really a, a great review. And, you know, to me, he, he would, he would shot it and he, he, showed patches and, and, and gave us a, you know, a, a very quality, you know, qualified review because he tested it pretty hard. Right. Gotcha. Um, so, you know, looking forward a little bit, um, I know you're, you're optimistic about, about 2019. Uh, what are some things on the horizon for you? So right now, uh, we're, we're at, in Walmart. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to to make more people aware of shoot through bore cleaning technology. We knew that there was a challenge between ammunition and cleaning products, and and what we've created is is, is a is a brand new channel, right? So there's a whole new channel of shoot through technology that people aren't aware. Of. So that's a challenge for us um, first and foremost. Um, you know, we originally talked to Walmart and, and, you know, they, they put us out into 3,600 locations nationwide, which was, which is wonderful. But, you know, again, if we don't have the awareness, um, what we have is almost like you are an example, like you, you were in Walmart, you just happened to see it and you're like, what is this? Right. I mean, so, mm -hmm. so not that you saw it through, through any type of advertising or online, um, you never connected that way. It was more of you saw it there and thought, "Hey, wow, that's a kind of cool idea." You know, I wonder what this is. Um, so we're now looking at distributors and dealers. We want to get it down into the dealer level for the consumer to go to their local gun shop and and be able to buy clean shot in the twelve and twenty. Now, I will say this: uh, we spent a lot of time over the last year uh, developing the nine millimeter round. Wow. I think we're somewhere between 75 and 80 percent complete. We have a couple more hurdles, but it, it is our plan to launch the nine millimeter round in 2019. It will probably probably be like September, uh, October ish of, of of next year. But um, we've got engineers helping us um, with some of the ballistic issues. Uh, we've got some propellant experts that are that are that we're working through some mathematical equation. Um, we've got um, some, some again, some ballistic help in there. But um, I'll say is, is we're super, super, super excited about um, the nine millimeter. I think that that you know is going to be a game changer for us um, because once you once you perfect the nine millimeter, then from there the the forty, the forty five, thirty eight will all soon follow. And so what I look at is we have a long-term projection of new product release. So, you know, if I look at the entire handgun line, we'll probably jump back to the 28 and the 410. Uh, I will say this, I'm in, I have um, 3D models made of the 5.56 um, that, that I'm 
I'm trying to work out some, some, you know, engineering aspects of it. So, I mean, there, there's a lot, I mean, I, you know, I'll say there's probably eight to 10 years. We could release two or three new products every year for the next 10 years. Wow. And I'm sure that, I'm sure that the metallic cartridges present a whole, whole different nother. set of problems from what the, the shot gels went through. And, um, and yeah, when y'all when y'all get those going, I definitely want to have you back because that's okay. That's we definitely want to talk that game because that's as interesting as the shot shells as the as the clean shot shot shells are now to me, and and I'm, I'm fascinated with, like I said, from somebody just coming up with that idea to actually getting it done in in practice. Um, the the whole idea of a metallic cartridge that acts the same way is just completely out there to me so uh that's cool but go ahead i didn't mean to step on no you. no i was gonna say if it's out there to you the, the weird thing is it's things that i dream about <laughs> you know what i mean right. it's just like you know it's it's a challenge and so so I, we're up for the challenge i mean we're, we're we're taking it on we're bringing in people um you know you know we we're, we're uncovering a lot of stuff and we're, we're excited i mean we're you know, there's a 2019 is going to be a big year for us, and we're, you know, we're, we're doing everything we can again to create awareness and get it down into the distributor and dealer. So, so you know, anyone who's listening or you know could go to you know, you know, Chris's gun shop, you know, at the corner of Fifth and Main, and, and pick it up in any town USA. I mean, that that's really the goal. So we're um, we're we're going to continue to innovate products. We're going to continue to release products. We're going to continue to work on getting it to the consumer, um, and and just do what we do. I mean, it's 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 been it's it's been exciting. Um, it's been a lot of work, but bottom line is, um, you know, it's been a lot of risk. You know, big risk, big reward, and uh, we'll continue to chase it. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure you're still with the. Uh... The patents are still coming. I'm assuming with the metallic stuff, right? <laughs> more and more yeah. getting added. Yeah, every, I've got I've got a meeting to, uh, Friday with my patent attorney to go over three more that we're applying for. Wow. So, but but again, it, it's just what you do, right? I mean, it's, yeah, you got to protect your your ideas and your and your designs without a doubt. Yep. And uh, it kind of makes it makes it a little easier to you know I, I always have concerns sometimes when we get into these conversations because. You know, I'm thinking, hey, these guys have spent their, the, literally their life savings in most cases on these products, and you know, here I am asking this question and that question, and and I expect them to plead the fifth or, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, say I can't answer that one, uh, but uh, I guess patents do protect you from from that a little bit and give you a little more leadway to to kind of talk more about how things work because, you know, the thing is the consumers out there are curious about that. Um, you know, you've got you've got the early early adopters with anything, right? They see something yep. new, and they've got to be a part of, of something new. Um, but the the vast majority of people, the ones that are really going to establish you in the market, um, they're hesitant. So they want to know a little more, and and especially with something like this that's so unique, they're you, you've got to get it out there at least a little bit of of how it actually works. And I think you've done a really good job at. Um, you know, without giving away the farm, so to speak, anyway, mm -hmm. <laughs> of, uh, of explaining how it how it works. So, um, and and it's harder to do through audio, of course. If we were, if you were able to show powerpoints and and slideshows, <laughs> it would be uh, a little easier explained, I think. So you you've done well. You've done very well. Yeah. Well, I'll say one thing is that um, I, you know, the, it's an interesting looking shell for the 12 gauge. We put it in a, a like a translucent clear hull. Uh, so when people look at it, they go, what is this? Like, this looks different. I mean, what are all those rings and, you know, what are these pads and, mm -hmm. you know, what it, what is in this thing? And so I think that it kind of draws some attention to it. Uh, the, the 20 gauge, I had to go with a yellow hull. Uh, due to federal regulations, because that's the law. But um, you know, I, I think I think the next production run, we're going to look at try to do a translucent yellow hull, so you can mm -hmm. see its inner working. That's what I was fixing to ask. Is there mm -hmm. is there a way around that with going with a little bit of, of translucent effect to it? 
Yeah, you know what, there is, but then the stipulation would be with, if you have a specific hull made for you, like in a translucent, mm -hmm. you know, you may have to buy a half a million rounds wow. for hulls, you know? Wow. I mean, so it, it's, a, it's a, you know, huge commitment, um, but we just need to, you know, get to that point where, uh, you know, at our next production run, we'll, we will definitely be considering that. Sure. Sure. And it, do, I don't know. I've never seen anything, but it, it would it be possible to do, you know, part that's translucent and then the another part yellow. Like say you had a window in there. Ooh, some, I don't know about kind? that. Yeah, I don't either. I don't know with the with the <laughs> yeah, manufacturer. I don't even know if that's possible. Work. You know, like the uh, if you've ever used a quart of oil, right? It has that yeah. that little yeah, window, like see -through part. Uh, yeah. that little strip. If you could do like <laughs> several of the. Of the skivs, I guess you call them on the on the hulls. You could do you know a row of those or something like that, a few rows of those, so you could see at least a, a little window in there. But I think that would probably be a little tougher on the manufacturing side than even the the solid, just the translucent yellow would be. So, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe you're thinking too far outside the box <laughs> with, with that one. I think, <laughs> right. So. Yeah. Thanks for adding that complication. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Uh, you, you're welcome. Uh, you can you can send me my royalties when they come in on that. Be, be yeah. Good. Uh, but uh, yeah, well uh, we're uh, we're about about up on time here. So okay. what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to give you a chance and um, let us let us know let everybody out there know uh, where they can can find your stuff. What's the best way to get in touch with you if they have questions? And uh, obviously they can find your stuff at Walmart. Uh, is there any other place? Can they get it on the website? Uh, just your, your normal spiel, as it would be. Yeah, yeah so we're available um, at about 3,000, 3,500 Walmarts across the country. Um, it's available in 12 and 20 gauge. comes in a four-pack. I think Walmart selling for about eight ninety seven. dollars um, We also sell it online at Huntigo.com. That's H-U-N-T-E-G-O.com. Um, on, on our website, we have a... Uh, cutaway view to show you how it works. We've got some videos on there that uh, show the product uh, in action, dirty bore, clean bore. We've done a patch test video, uh, again, showing you what, you know, shooting traditional rounds and then with one clean shot. And then to me, what, you know, in the video we say, you know, the evidence is, is absolutely clear of uh, the effectiveness of clean shot. Um, right now we are running a program uh, free shipping on any order uh, through December 16th. Nice. Uh, all the all ammunition has to go ground, so I want to make sure it gets there before Christmas. Sure, and great stocking suppers, by the way. Great oh, stocking suppers. Oh, great stocking suppers, yeah. Yeah, for, for the hunter or shooter in your family. Exactly, and for those out there that are in my family, I'm just letting you know, great stocking <laughs> suppers, by the way. <laughs> right, right, you were just kind of broadcasting that hint, out there. Hint, right? hint, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, well, Kurt, I, I do appreciate you, you joining us, and, and I was sincere once you've got the new products going and they come out. Uh, you know, definitely let us know, and, and we'll have you back. But we have appreciated your, your time for sure today. Thank you. I appreciate you giving me some time. Thank you for joining us for another Firearm Friday. Don't forget to check out CloverTac.com. There you will find all of our social media links, the blog, cool swag, discount codes, and more. If you would like to support our efforts as well as receive extra content and perks, check out Clover Tech over on Patreon. Have a great weekend, and we will catch all of you next week on Firearm Friday.